Sometimes you just need to take the slips out and bowl defensively. And you also need to be careful with your computer's defense as well. If you need a VPN, go Nord. NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber to get a two year contract with a discount plus four extra months and gifts in some markets. It's completely risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. So put in some dot balls and turn them into maidens via NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber. Morning everyone and welcome to the scoreboard. I love that at the start of this game we just had a random generator pick the teams and then all that followed was um, Punjab batting like they were, what, RCB from 2008. though scored at a rate that it looked like he was in the middle of having a golf accident. He was scoring so slow. And this is a team that's never made an innings that they didn't want to explode with violence. And yet they looked like an entity bunch of anchors and it was quite clear that a big part of this was the wicket it was tricky it was too paced the ball wasn't always coming on but even so you kind of assumed eventually someone from Punjab was just going to hit a lot of sixes because that's eventually what they at least try and do and when Livingston went out I felt like they might have actually just run out of people who could even do that for them but then Ashutosh came in as the impact sub and he hit as many sixes as the entire team before him ended up with 31 from 16 but this weird Bottom hand, low hand grip, uh, it was crazy. Also, what was crazy was that Rajasthan remembered that Trent Bolt and Keshav Maharaj are allowed to actually bowl their overs. They bowled double the amount of overs as last time, and I'm going to have that down as a positive based on how they bowled today. Uh, Rajasthan Royals sent out their like for like Josh Butler replacement with Tanush Kotian, who had never batted higher than number eight, never really made any runs, and had done all of that slowly. I'm honestly, I'm still here at the end of this game wondering whether he was a pinch blocker, a pinch hitter, or just in, they were in a pinch. I don't know. But despite not losing wickets, they actually managed to keep Punjab in the game for a long time. And when Livingston stole a bunch of dots and actually got a wicket as well, um, and then Rabada came back on and took a few more wickets, suddenly that chase looked incredibly tough. And they went from being massively in front to needing two runs of ball for the last, what, three or four overs. And... Even though this was a tough, tricky wicket and no one, anyone who tried to hit across the line seemed to hit the ball straight up in the air, you did think to yourself, the kind of wicket that this is re reminiscent of is the kind that we see in the CPL, where you just want someone to come in who can hit boundaries. Robin Powell hit a couple, and then Shimron Hetmeyer did that and ended up actually cleaning up the game. It was a messy kind of wicket. Um, obviously, Rajasthan didn't have Ashwin. Uh, their batting order was all over the place. I mean, they basically opened the batting with a prize winner and they still won. They will take that. As far as Punjab, though, they lost Darwin and they still gave it a shake. Perhaps if they scored five or ten more, which didn't seem impossible to be able to get to, they probably would have won this game. They were certainly in it. Anyway, let's head over to the scoreboard and see what we have for us today. Well, this is Rajasthan's run rate by face. This is what I was talking about when they just never really got themselves in a position where they're ahead of the rate. Now, I don't know why Kotian was sent out, and I'm sure we're going to have like a million questions. And if, if you want to ask a question in the chat, obviously Super Chat's the best way to go. But I'm not going to be able to answer that because I have no idea. But the point I would have thought, and I was, I was on Cricket 8 with Stuart Mika, we both thought that the first three overs, when the ball was skidding on a little bit more, was your best chance of hitting boundaries. And they seemed to set in someone who couldn't hit boundaries. He also couldn't go out. It was a remarkable um, thing. But it meant that they went at seven runs and over with Jaiswal in. They really, I think they could have iced the game here. Jaiswal still set in here. And unfortunately, and he had Sampson. Again, they just never got enough where either of these periods is at eight, eight and a half. That's probably enough to win this game. This is the problem all the way through. And I'm sure we'll look at that with Punjab as well. The older the ball got and the more grip you got in your slow balls. When you tried to hit boundaries, it was very hard. The outlier, of course, was that both teams did manage to hit boundaries right at the end. I can't explain that at all, but uh, you can see the huge difference that Hetmeyer and Robman Powell made at the end of this game. And by that, I mean, you could have a look at it right here. So nothing wrong with Jaiswal being 139 on this wicket. It was that the pinch hitter at the other end was at, was at 77. I didn't realize it was that low. My God, he, he felt like he batted for ages. Him and, jo him and Johnny Besto felt like they batted for about a day and a half each. Um, and you could see here that 
uh, I mean, Paragas ended up with a strike rate of 127. He got eight of those runs with edges. And one was a six, another one went for two. He's unlucky not to get a four, really. Uh, he really uh, saw off a lot of dot balls in the middle. And then I have no idea why Drew Durrell came out before Hetmeyer. That was a perfect time for Hetmeyer to come out. But ridiculous that on this wicket, he's ended up with a strike rate of 270. And Robin Powell completely did his job as well. And in fact, in some ways, you kind of want Robin Powell to be the one taking the bigger risks early on. Although, not that those were particularly risky shots. But as in, because that allows Hetmeyer to even get more set before he attacked. Although, he was like 13 or 5. So, in this case, it didn't matter. Uh, but this is his true values by phase. Now, Hetmeyer believes that he should bat further up the order. And one of the reasons that he doesn't, I think, is, well, you could say three of the reasons he doesn't is on this graph. We'll get to his death batting in the middle. Forget this, he doesn't really need to ever bat in the power play that much, a bit like Nicholas Perrin. You know, if you have a complete collapse, you might use him, but otherwise you never would. This is more interesting. He scored 82 runs between overs 7 to 11. We've seen him certainly do this in other leagues. Um, you know, he made his name batting at number three for Guyana, if I remember correctly, three and four. But you can see here that when he bats in those periods, and I think this is when he's at his weakest, he's, he, he can get out early on, but also he's slow. This period is what I was talking about before with the kind of um, uh, Robin Powell thing of sometimes he just needs a few more balls to get set than other players. You can see he's not, he doesn't get out in this period. What, that's why I think he's perfect to come in between the 10th and the 12th over because he's quite a good player of spin as well. If he comes in between the 10th and the 12th over, you're going to get a lot of runs. He's not going to go out and you will take the minus 10 strike rate because the true strike rate, because you know at the death, he's got a plus 30 strike rate. So you're willing to balance these two out. He's not going to go out so he can keep you in the game, and then he's going to go kaboom. And that's essentially what he did today, except he didn't have to come in now. Uh, this is Jaiswell's innings progression today versus the IPL in 2023. A lot of this just tells you that the wicket is slightly different. But you can see here, he, he he's quite. that's quite a fast starter, but he actually really goes up and that 10 ball mark last season he was scoring at two runs a ball right and and then there's a bit of a dip here which is interesting because where are we 20 balls he should be still up around well maybe he shouldn't be up around there but he should still be scoring at quite a good rate that's too big of a dip for someone as good as him but this isn't a bad dip because he's striking at 170 180 at this point and then obviously he can score at two runs an end uh, and, and what's this the 40 ball mark so we know he can score two runs a ball for a long period of time at the end. On a pitch like today, you can see the actual graphic is fairly similar. It's just that it's going to be lower because this is a low, lower scoring wicket. He wasn't the issue here. It was the fact he was opening with, as I said, some poor... Imagine being in your first IPL game and you've come in to probably bowl some matchup off spin. And then they've said to you, oh, do you want to open? Do you want to go out and face Kagisa Rabada uh, in the second over? No, no, I don't want to do that. You idiots. Uh, this is Samson's true strike uh, rate in five ball interviews in this season so far. So you can see he's been a very slow starter. Um, uh, and then, uh, well, actually, this is true strike rate. I thought this was strike rate because he was so low. Oh, my God. So he's basically not scoring at all when he starts. That's something worth looking at. That's a really, really interesting one. And then from then on in... He's hovering around par until the 20 ball mark. And then after 20 balls, he cashes in. Again, this is a sort of, you know, there were some of those innings last year where Samson came in and scored quite quickly early on. And I thought this was the perfect one. He had the spinners on. If he could just come down the wicket and whack a couple of boundaries off the spinners. Again, probably ices this game. Uh, but by starting so slow, that's, that's a big advantage to the bowling team in these kinds of games. Uh, we'll just have a quick break and I will be back in a moment. You're with Jared Kimber here on the scoreboard. Sometimes you just need to take the slips out. This is brought to you by Cricket 8. They are a new player in the game trying to educate fans on what is really happening in cricket. We have a partnership with them where we host live watch-alongs, do podcasts, and write articles. If you want to know what is really happening with our game, visit cricket8.com. If you make any content, Minbo Pro is the tool for you. Take your long format content and cut it and slice it for social media. This AI inspired weapon will turn your one piece of work into so many clips. Try Minbo.pro now.
Back, so you can see here with Rian Prague, and this is something I've noticed a lot and I've talked about on air, is I do think he chews up a lot of balls in, in that sort of 1 to 10 mark and even in that 10 to 20 mark. And you can see all the innings he's played this year. He's had the one against Gujarat where he was a 160 strike rate um, between balls um, 10 and 20. And then a lot of games down here where he was 110, 120. I'd have to, you'd have to go deeper into his smart stats to see if this is a pattern. But perhaps what he's managed to do and for a player like him, I don't think this is the worst thing in the world. But perhaps what he's managed to do is the ability to keep himself in for 20 balls. And then once he's set, he knows he can hit at a rate of, you know, like four runs a ball, uh, three runs a ball. What's that? Two runs a ball type thing. So he knows that. So the problem with this is that if Samson is also going to start really slow, it means that if they do lose Jaiswal and Butler, they're in a position where they're going to have two guys coming in who are going to take up maybe 30 balls of under par scoring before they get going. Um, and on a wicket like this today, that's the kind of thing where one of them kind of has to go. But I can understand why they wouldn't as well. And you can see here, it's phenomenal. His first 10 balls, he's scoring a strike rate of 90. That goes up to 135 from 11 to 20, but he's really well set by that point. And then it keeps going up. So the trajectory is fine. The problem isn't the trajectory. It's that if he gets to a point where he scored, what, nine runs, 13 runs, so he's, what, 24 off 20 at that point, and he gets out. He's taken up a lot of balls without helping you. Uh, and this is Punjab's bowlers today. I don't know what it was about Arshdeep, but I just kept looking at him going, for some reason, this wicket seems to be helping his kind of bowlers, but it's not helping him specifically. It just felt like he was coming onto the bat so much better. But remember, eight runs, as I was saying before, came off edges of Riyam Parag. So you do have to factor that in. But I'm not surprised he didn't get the 19th over and, they, and Curran went with himself because I thought Curran looked so much better. On, I thought Curran bowled really, really well from almost from ball one today. Harshal, it's, it's an issue. Harpery and Livingston, absolutely no issue here. They got six overs out of that. They would take that every time. Did they both get a wicket? I know Livingston certainly did. As I said, I thought Curran bowled really, really well. Um, but Rabada was fantastic. They took the punt on using Rabada early on, um, but they did get them the wickets. But I just thought he was... And considering that a lot of the better bowlers were the sort of current guys taking the pace off, I thought it was interesting that Rabada went so well. Uh, and this is Harpreet Bharat's true values by batting type. You can see here, um, against left-handers... Uh, sorry, against right-handers, he's taken a lot of wickets, but he's basically a neutral bowler. He's not a massive plus bowler against left-handers. I'm assuming this, uh, sorry, right-handers. And this is him against left-handers. Unless um, Varun has put this on backwards, that would seem to be the complete opposite of what it should be. And I'm assuming he has it because of the amount of wickets, right? 17 wickets against right-handers and five wickets against left-handers. So he's going at half a run less than what you would expect um, of, of, of a bowler to go against left-handers and also got a slight bump on his true wicket ratio. So why are they not using him against left-handers? And is this number just from the amount of times that he's bowled against them? I think that's something worth looking into deeper as this tournament goes on. It might only matter if Punjab are massively important, of course, later on in the tournament, which after today looks less likely. And this is Rabada. So we can see here that he is plus in wickets all the way through. So he's an above average wicket taker all the way through. But he's just above a neutral bowler in the power play. You'd still take that. You'd certainly still give him a wicket in every single power play based on what he does. And he doesn't get many of the overs in that first bit after the power play. But you can see he has taken 10 wickets at a run better. But look at his true wicket ratio here. If it's me, I give him one here, two here, one here, and one here. No, I got that wrong. Sorry. One here, one here one here and one here, if they want to use Arshdeep and Sam Curran and Harshal at the death. Um, I think he I think he works really well. But have a look at his true economy here in the death is um, almost, at what, uh, three quarters of a run better than average. And he's a huge wicket taker. So they have the option of using him more, but I still like the fact that he's above average wicket taker all the way through, right? That's the way I would use a, a bowler like Rabada. And it gives them an option then of they can use him twice at the end and they can actually give one of his extra overs here or here to Arshdeep or Curran. 
another way of looking at it as well. But I think when you have an above average strike bowler, what you really want to be able to, do, especially when they can do it all parts of the game, what you want to be able to do is stagger that. So that you know for every block of overs, you have a chance of taking a wicket because he might be bowling. Anyway, he certainly kept a minute today with his wickets. These are teams in the power play this season. This is um, average and strike rate so far. So we can see that Rajasthan Royals have an average of 28 with a strike rate of 119. Incredible, because they have Jaiswal and Bartler and Sanju Sampson's been making runs, right? I, I find that absolutely remarkable. And then you've got Punjab over here. They've been averaging 30, so a little bit better there with a strike rate of 125. Again, Besto and Shikadawan. You expect the strike rate to be down, but a little bit disappointing on average as well. And you can see uh, why uh, Kolkata have been so great. And you've got the three sort of elite batting sides up here. And then, uh, you know, maybe a, more, a little bit more steady as it goes, but Chennai would be over the moon to keep those numbers all the way through to the end of the year. This is Bairstow's true value by, by bowling type. After years of struggling against left arm pace, I think he's really fixed that, uh, which was an interesting one, of course, because he had the matchup against Trent Bolt today. And I think it was the last couple of years, he's really, really done well against it. Uh, so you can see he's a massive plus. Left arm wrist spin, we don't have to worry about that because that's basically non-existent. <laughs> this is really interesting that he is negative on true strike rate and on true average. So he's not found a way to really handle the left arm finger spin at all. Uh, and Keshav Maharaj, of course, uh, bowling into him today. I actually think I would have used him in the power play against him as well, which they didn't today. But you see, he's still plus against everything else. And he, um, he particularly likes off spin. Sort of, I think that helps. If you think of the way his bat path comes, so his bat path is sometimes a little bit across because of the way he whips. I think his biggest problem at the moment is length balls. Um, uh, from seam bowlers, but you know, we'll ha I'll have to have a look at that another time because he seems to be just unaware of how to um, handle them. We, we saw here 2019, 2020, 2021, three plus seasons. Less so in 2021, he's, he's still got a plus strike rate though. This is a phenomenal season. He's averaging 24 more than a normal batter in his position while scoring at you know a third more than they do. Um, just absolutely remarkable. Uh, and then 2021, that's another great season. And there was nothing wrong with 2022. Obviously, he's now post-injury. The question that Punjab have to ask themselves is, and it's tricky after a wicket like that, because it's hard to ever make a proper judgment on a batter when you've seen them on that. But they do have to ask themselves right at the moment, is he out of form? And do we need to try something different? And I'm leaning towards the fact that, that since that leg injury, he hasn't looked quite like the same player. And I, how many more games do you give him? Uh, to wait for that old form to come back. And we, show, we showed you the uh, Rajasthan one of these at the start. Um, and you can see here that Punjab, like they went at 6.3 runs in the first um, overs. And then it went down to four runs and over after that. Um, I thought Rajasthan bowled really well, but this is without Ashwin, right? And Chahal and Keshav Maharaj, you're not getting much of respite, but imagine if they'd had Ashwin as well. Uh, but they, I, I thought they did well, Punjab, to come back and some of that good hitting at the end of, uh, I think, did Shashank get a couple of boundaries? Livingston got that a couple. And then Ashatosh did really, really well right at the death. And on, on cue, I like Tide, by the way. I'm interested to see if, the, the, my issue is, does he match very well with Darwin? But that's a, another one for another day. Uh, the Sam Curran up the order thing didn't work particularly well, but you'd see these guys were trying to get on. I thought Shashank hit boundaries. I must have meant Jitesh, sorry. Um, you can see these guys were trying to get on, but this combination was really what helped them at the end. I, I liked Ashatosh, but it is a weird shovely. What's the best way of putting it? It's almost like, it, it looks like he's crowbarring runs. And I love it from an aesthetics point of view because it's so ugly. But it does remind me of Ijaz Ahmed. And there's probably not a single person on this YouTube at the moment that will remember Ijaz Ahmed. But there you go. And we're just looking at their batters in the IPL uh, so far this year. So who have we got as massive pluses? Livingston's looked really good. Um, and I thought he did okay um, today. Uh, that's Ashatosh, isn't it? He's looked very good in limited samples. And Shashink Singh failed today. Um, I thought he got a couple of boundaries, but I might be wrong. Shikha Darwan being down on average and down on strike rate. And there's just a whole lot of this down here that's not particularly good. So Curran currently is averaging 21 with a strike rate of 120. He's playing as an anchor. Shikha's playing as an anchor. 
Sakanda didn't really get going. That's Bearstow. That's Detesh Sharma. That's prob- there's, that's three guys and then two anchors who were playing. If you got, your anchors are not making any runs and your attacking players aren't scoring very quickly, it's a lot of pressure on three very late innings batters. And just the highest strike rates in the IPL so far, why not? Third highest strike rate in the whole entire um, uh, IPL is Ashutosh. As I said, I, I love it. It's the shovely style that he has. I want more of it. Um, this was his strike rate in the SMAT of, of 2023-24. I think Rob Barron on Cricket 8 was saying that he has a huge six ratio, and we saw that again today. Um, so far, his strike rate here, I mean, he's come back to earth. He's gone from 277 to only 197. Uh, but great hitting from him. And just having a look at the bowlers today. Trent Bolt and Maharaj bowled four overs last time, as I said in the intro. They doubled that to eight overs. One went for five and a half, and one went for 5.8. Uh, that, them both being good together, is probably, with that combination is what got them over the line. I thought Chahal bowled well, as, um, and, and the other two went. But if they'd have one of these guys go for eight, might have been the difference. Maybe Hetmeyer doesn't have enough juice to be able to get them home at the end. Um, and this is uh, the SA20 Maharaj bowling. So you can see, I was shocked to see him in the IPL, not because I don't think he's IPL worthy, but more that I didn't think teams would take a punt on him. He's not a very good batter. He's not a great fielder either. He's not terrible at either of those skills, but he's not a big plus. Um, but I like Maharaj. I think he's a smart cricketer. I think he works really hard. Uh, I think he can bowl with the new ball. He can bowl in the middle. If you, in, on, in circumstances that helped him, if you said, look, we need you to bowl at the death, he's not gonna be afraid of bowling at the death. Um, so I really like him. And this is Chahal. So this is 25 wickets or more on, this is uh, true economy and uh, true wickets here. You can see that Chahal at the moment, 147 wickets, which is 139, yeah, so mass is up on PSL 135. So he's got a huge amount of wickets. He's half a run better and over compared to a normal bowler on true economy. And he's 37% more likely to take a wicket than anyone else. All right, so let's actually have a look at Patel over here. He's 38%. So he's just behind the greatest guy ever. And this is on 27 wickets compared to 147. I don't understand why he's not talked up as an absolute great. Um, but th- I do like this as well, because I'm just going to give you a little bit of Sun on Orion. And also, Andre Russell's interesting for his true economy down here. But yeah, Sun on Orion, a run and a half um, and over better than a normal bowler in his overs is absolutely incredible. And I will always shout out my man here, Colonel Pandya. Uh, is that... And we go... Uh, oh! Ah! I was going to say we got a, here we go we got Avish Khan here. Uh, we can see that I, I thought it was a bit of a return to form. I've actually liked how he's bowled this year. Uh, 2023 is over here where he was a run and over worse and wasn't taking wickets. That comes off two really good years. And if you were around this channel, I talked him up a lot. I think it's he went at eight runs and over today, so maybe that was a just above par day. Um, he, I think he's really, he's changing himself to be more of a defensive bowler than an attacking bowler, which I think is interesting. So you can see here, he's well under um, uh, the wickets. I'm fascinated to see how Avesh Khan goes uh, throughout the rest of the season. But that's it for the scoreboard part of the show. Now we'll get to your questions. We'll have a quick break while I go through um, a couple of them and then uh, we will come back. I'm Jared Kimber, like, subscribe, do all those things. Go over to goodareas.co um, and you can see more stuff from some of the videos we've done. Obviously, we've got the main channel as well. Support us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Jared Kimber and um, support Cricket 8. But let's have a quick break. If you watch this channel, you'll love us on Maine, where we do deep dives into the greatest cricket stories every week at Good Areas. How did Virat Kohli play that shot? What is so weird about Neil Wagner? And explaining the incredible misery of being a New Zealand opening batter. Visit our Good Areas site today. Want to show the world that you not only love cricket, but that you know the game deeply. Well, you need a Bodyline t-shirt. In fact, at Bodyline t-shirts, you can actually buy a t-shirt about Bodyline, but also tees inspired by the greatest players in our game. Head to Bodyline t-shirts today. All right, we don't have heaps of questions, but there's a few in here and a few super chats already. So let's get to those. Oh, he says optimistic. Oh, this is the bit I have to make the screen bigger. 
Sand says, a stat was shown during the match um, that suggested Besto had struggled against 140k plus bowls. Oh, I missed that one. I like it. In the last four IPL seasons. And it was apparent today when Avesh came on. Well, Avesh isn't that plus of 140, is it? Um, I think he struggled with a lot of things of recent times. I wouldn't be massively worried about that because we've seen the smash 140 kilometer bowlers in test cricket and ODI cricket over the last three or four years. I don't think he's the player he used to be though. I think his physicality has changed. I think his bat path has changed. So when you have a leg injury, the path at which your bat comes in changes just a couple of degrees. And I think he's having trouble with that. I also just don't think he's seen the ball as well. You know, think about 2022 Bairstow on a wicket like that would have just waited for the ball to be in his area and swatted sixes. He doesn't look like that player anymore. He looks rushed, which might go back to your pace. He looks like his bat's in the wrong spot. He looks like he's not playing the right kind of attacking shots. He's not using his feet to come down and change things with the bowlers um, when he's struggling. He just doesn't look like the player um, to me, Sam. So I think there's a lot of issues with Bairstow. If that's another one that's also interesting, I don't have that data and I'd like to see that data outside the IPL, right? Only because I've seen him play and seen bowling pretty well outside the IPL or fast bowling. PayPal, not the PayPal, says KKR's bowling looked strong, adept at restricting scores. Why is it then lacking despite a good unit um, uh, and a Vibav, Harshit in great form? What are they missing and how can they dominate through the innings? Uh, it looks good on paper, but I think if, I mean, I've talked about it a lot. I can tell you why it's not particularly good, but let me just bring up the raw stats um, as quickly as I can here. Uh, the, the biggest issue I would have with their bowling is that they kind of need Chakravarti and Sunil Narayan to be dominating in tandem because that's where the strength of that bowling lineup comes from. Uh, but there's some other issues here uh, that we need to think about. Mitchell Stark is a massive overpay. Um, uh, for the Mitchell Stark that exists now. He's not a massive overpay for everything else. Uh, Harshad has only bowled in two innings so far, but he's been fantastic. Andre Russell has been about, he's taking wickets at the sort of level that he gets, but going really expensive. That's about par. Sun on Narayan is about par from what you would expect. Chakravarti is going at almost 10 runs and over. He seems to have years where the ball flicks out better and where it doesn't. This at the moment looks like one of those years. Mitchell Stark is taken two wickets in four matches at 77. Some of that will leave even off. He's not going to continue there, but he's also going at almost two runs a ball. So you're putting, if you've got three banking bowlers, Narayan, Varun, and Stark, right? Of those three banking bowlers, one of them is doing exactly what you think, and the other two aren't. That's where you are at. Harshit, as I said, hasn't played, uh, hasn't done enough. And I know uh, Aurora, uh, what you, uh, uh, what's his name, Vabab, has done well, but again, not from that many games. But if you've got two massive bowlers who aren't doing particularly well, and then you look at the rest of that bowling lineup, who do they go to? So, CS Sharma, who I like, not bowling uh, at all, really, in this tournament. Venki can't bowl, right? There isn't as much flexibility in it. So Andre Russell is a negative bowler. I think we showed you that on the scoreboard today. Overall, he's a negative bowler, but he's a very good sixth bowler. He's currently bowled 8.2 overs going at nine runs and over. They might have to ride him a little bit harder because of what's going on. But the bigger issue really is that if one of Chakravarti or Stark doesn't come good, I can't see how they're a plus bowling unit. And if Chakravarti, Stark and Russell are all going to go at around nine runs, 10 runs, 11 runs and over, and I think Harshit does as well, despite the fact that I think we both agree he's bowled well. Um, that's just expensive. So it looks good on paper and it can still get better. I don't think Varun Chakravarti and Stark will both be as bad as they are now throughout the rest of the season. But what I said, I think it might've been on the power rankings is one of them needs to get better now. That's, this is when it has to happen. It needs to be right now. Uh, Path has come through uh, with a question. RCB was 95 without loss after 10. Uh, against uh, Rajasthan. Kohli should have realized that 220 was necessary with all of his experience. He still played for his 100. Is he unethically selfish? Uh, in what world is current a number four? So the, the Kohli thing is, Kohli's plan was to bat through the innings as long as possible and let everyone hit beside him. At what point does he realize that's not happening? 
I don't think that is unethically selfish. I think it's him thinking, well, I have to get the runs because no one else is getting the runs. But him thinking, I have to get the runs means I have to slow down because that's how Coley thinks. We know that. We've seen it so many times before. So I think that is a big issue. The, he was selfish towards the 100. He definitely get, There was a, two or three balls that, he, that were full tosses that he pushed for ones and twos that he should hit for fours and sixes. So that was the only time I would say he was selfish. But I think he has an issue where he doesn't trust his batting lineup all that much. And they weren't batting very well. These, these two things matter as well. And I think you'll see with Coley in years when the batting lineup isn't working, he will slow down. Um, I do think there is a correlation between those two things. If he doesn't trust the other guys, he's like, well, I'm going to stay in as long as possible. And then we'll hopefully we'll be able to get them on the bowling. The problem with the bowling is RCB. Uh, and the current question. Karen isn't a bad number four, I don't think. He's a left-hander, so he matches up quite well against left arm finger spin and wrist spin. He's not a number four in, in a world of which you, you have a good team. He's a number four in a, team, in a world of which you have, living, you have a bunch of guys who whack it, and he can whack it sometimes, and he can probably average, what, 20 to 25 at a strike rate of 135? That's not bad numbers if you have Shashank. Um, Jitesh, Livingston, am I missing one? Ashatosh, at the end. But it's weird because if you've got Shikatawan and you've got Curran, you're playing a dual anchor role, but with a bunch of sloggers around them. They're a muddled team. It doesn't really make sense. They paid a lot of money to Sam Curran and they're trying to make him work. And sometimes you can't make fetch work. It's another old reference. Uh... Bagesh says, where do we watch Cricket 8 live? Watch along. I can't find it on YouTube. They're not on YouTube. They're 100% on cricket8.com. Um, do I have cricket8.com here? No, it just says Cricket 8 on the logo. Uh, yeah, so come across. Uh, tomorrow we've got Jack Hope in with myself and Rob Barron. Uh, today, um, Stuart Mika sat down and said, uh, what's the odds on wide first ball? And it was um, 20 to 1. And he said, that's a really good bet. And of course, five minutes later, when the first ball was bowled, Trent Bolt did. So well done to anyone who was on. Uh, we, you know, we were very early on uh, the, the pitch and, uh, you know, quite a few different uh, things that went on with that game today. But I, I thought it was a really, really fascinating um, uh, uh, live watch along today. And tomorrow we got the two games. So we're doing most of the weekends. There's a couple of midweek games as well. Um, we might put a Facebook um, um Schedule up so that people can follow on. But during the weekends, more often than not, especially if there's two games on, we'll be on uh, the watch alongs. Uh, who have we had so far? We've had Stuart Meeker, Jack Hope, Michelle St. Patrick Hewitt, Kritika Naidu. We've got Mark Mercado coming in. Um, a couple of other bigger names as well uh, will be popping in at times. Uh, so thanks to everyone for supporting us over there. They're a, a sponsor or a partner of ours as well. So just going to cricket8.com and having a look at some of the articles that CS and Cheyenne and Saurabh and Estelle have written um, is helping us, right? And go, if you throw in like, uh, go and throw their Facebook page a like, that helps us. So big shout out uh, to Cricket 8, and I'm in Cricket 8 at the moment. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow for the two games. Uh, thanks to Varun and Cheyenne for putting everything together on the live watch along. And it's, um, remember, it'll be power list on Monday. So if you're watching this show, uh, and we've or we've got the live uh, stream up tomorrow. Feel free to put up your own power lists. Uh, it'd be really interesting to see what you all think about that. Uh, but I'm Jared Kimber. This is a scoreboard, and we will see you again after tomorrow. Good Areas is our other YouTube channel, and twice a week it covers the great cricket stories from today and from 200 years ago. Like how a late 1800s blogger decided which games were tests and that actually stuck. Also why Ishan Sharma was one of the biggest comebacks we've ever seen in our sport and whether captaincy affects batting. For all of this and more, go to Good Areas twice a week. In cricket, we protected our groin a full century before we looked after our brain. So don't be like our sport. If you need a VPN, go Nord. Use nordvpn.com forward slash Kimba to get a huge discount on your Nord VPN plan plus four additional months for free. It's completely risk-free as well with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. Cricket wouldn't be the same without protection and neither is your computer. Use Nord VPN today.